welcome to another module in this massive open online course. So, we are looking at robust beam forming as an application of convex optimization or the optimization framework that we have seen so far. So, let us continue our discussion. Uh, we are looking at robust beam forming for a multiple antenna system. Remember what beam forming does is to focus the wireless signal in a particular direction, form a beam in a particular direction and robust beam forming is the paradigm where uh, the knowledge of the channel is not known precisely. So, there is uncertainty in the channel knowledge and how to design a beam former that is robust to that uncertainty. We said the robust beam former can be designed as the solution to the following optimization problem. W minimize W bar transpose R W bar, W bar is the beam former, R is the noise plus interference covariance matrix. Uh, subject to the constraint that W bar transpose H bar is greater than or equal to 1 for all H bar belongs to this uh, ellipse, correct? Uh, this ellipsoid, this is also termed as the uncertainty ellipsoid. is also termed as uncertainty ellipsoid and uh, this ellipsoid is uh, described as follows. This ellipsoid is the ellipse which has the center h bar e that is the nominal channel or the estimated channel. So, this h bar e plus p u bar such that norm u bar is less than or equal to 1. Okay. And uh, well, now we want to solve this optimization problem to basically determine the uh, optimal beam former, okay, the optimal robust beam former if you will. Okay. And uh, that solution, first of all, let us simplify this optimization problem and this is where it can be done in a very interesting fashion as described below. So, let us look at the constraint and the constraint can be simplified as follows. Okay. Remember the constraint ensures a minimum gain of unity for all vectors h bar belonging to the uncertainty ellipsoid. So, we have uh, what is the constraint? The constraint is w bar transpose h bar is greater than or equal to v for all h bar belonging to the uncertainty ellipsoid, which means now you substitute for h bar. W bar transpose H bar is well we have seen that is simply H bar E the estimated channel plus P u bar greater than or equal to 1 for all. Now, for all H bar belong to E now becomes because the equivalent condition is H bar E plus P u bar for all vectors u bar such that norm u bar is less than or equal to 1 for all norm u bar less than or equal to 1. Okay. Now, this is the interesting part. Now, this has to be true for all vectors u bar such that norm u bar is less than or equal to 1. This has to be greater than or equal to 1, all right, which implies basically this also has to hold at that value of u bar where this is the minimum. All right. So, if the minimum of this over all u bar is greater than or equal to 1 that automatically implies that it is going to be greater than or equal to uh, 1 for all u bar such that norm u bar is less than or equal to 1. So, this can be written equivalently and uh, you can convince yourself this implies that for the minimum of u bar that is if you take the minimum over u bar such that norm u bar less than or equal to 1 this w bar transpose h bar e plus p u bar greater than or equal to 1. Okay. If this if this uh, this definitely implies that over the minimum this has to be greater than or equal to 1 and this implies uh, now I can simplify this further 
you take the minimum of norm over norm u bar or all u bars is that norm u bar is less than or equal to 1. Now, I can simplify this as w bar transpose h e bar plus w bar transpose p u bar. The minimum has to be okay, uh, over this minimum this has to be greater than or equal to now, this is a constant w bar transpose h e bar, this does not depend on u bar, okay. so this will come out of the minimization. So, this implies if you look at this uh, w bar transpose h bar e plus the minimum of norm u bar less than equal to 1 w bar transpose p u bar greater than equal to 1. Now, what we are going to do? We are going to set this uh, let us set this uh, w bar transpose p as w tilde which implies p transpose w bar uh, I am sorry w tilde transpose. So, p transpose w bar will be w tilde. So, I will write this as uh, w bar transpose h bar e plus the minimum over norm or all u bar such that norm u bar less than or equal to 1 uh, minimum over u bars that uh, w tilde transpose uh, u bar greater than or equal to 1. And now this is very interesting. Now, if you observe, now you see what is this? This is the nothing but the dot product W tilde transpose u bar. So we have W tilde, and we have this vector u bar, correct? And we have the dot product. Now, when is the dot product between w tilde and u bar minimum? Remember the dot product is maximum when u bar is perfectly aligned with w tilde and the dot product is minimum when the vector is uh, 180 degree that is it is completely in opposite direction in, direct, in a direction opposite to that of w tilde. So, the dot product is minimum when u bar forms a 180 degree angle with w tilde. So, this is where so the this is let us say this is star. So, this is a 180 degree angle. So, we say w tilde u bar is minimum when u bar is opposite that is forms a 180 degree angle with w tilde and therefore, what we say is u bar star this will be equal to minus w tilde because the vector that is exactly opposite to w tilde is minus w tilde. However, we need u bar to be norm u bar to be less than equal to 1 therefore, we normalize this with norm of w tilde that is. It. So, u bar is the unit norm vector that is opposite to w tilde and this is for which uh, this is precisely the u bar for which you have minimum such that norm u bar less than or equal to 1 w tilde transpose u bar. Okay, this is where the minimum occurs that is when u bar is a unit norm vector that is exactly opposite in direction to w tilde therefore, the inner product is basically a negative number right because cosine 180 is minus 1. Okay. So, this implies that now the minimum will be w bar transpose h bar e plus the minimum over norm u bar u bar says that norm u bar less than equal to 1 occurs when u bar equals minus w uh, when u bar equals uh, minus w tilde divided by norm w tilde therefore and that will be w tilde transpose into and I am now substituting for that value of u bar which is minus w tilde divided by norm w tilde 
and this has to be greater than or equal to 1. If this is greater than or equal to 1, then it is going to be greater than or equal to 1 for all by implication by, uh, so, uh, uh, by following this argument, it is going to be greater than or equal to 1 for all vectors h bar belonging to that uncertainty ellipse. And now you see this is minus w tilde transpose into w tilde is nothing but norm w tilde square divided by w norm w tilde. So, that is norm w tilde. So, this implies w bar transpose h bar b minus norm w tilde greater than or equal to 1. And now we substitute for now w tilde, w tilde is nothing but we have seen earlier uh, w tilde is basically your p transpose w bar. So, this implies w bar transpose h bar e minus norm of p bar transpose w bar so, this has to be greater than or equal to 1. This is the equivalent constraint or this you can say is the simplified constraint. Simplified constraint and uh, you can also write this as now. Uh, w bar transpose h bar e minus norm of p transpose w bar greater than or equal to 1. This can also be simplified as follows norm of p transpose w bar less than or equal to uh, w bar transpose h bar e minus 1. Okay. And uh, now, if you look at this is very interesting, you can recall that this is a norm and this is your affine, this is the affine portion. So, we have norm less than or equal to something that is affine. So, this is basically you can recall and you can look the notes, this is a conic constraint. In fact, this, this constraint represents a conic region or this is basically a cone or this is known as a, uh, this is let us say, this is a cone also known as a conic constraint. It is a very interesting constraint, it reduces to a cone or a conic constraint and therefore, now the equivalent optimization problem to find the robust beam former okay, that can be formulated as. equivalent optimization problem for robust beam forming that will be minimum of uh, minimum of w bar transpose r w bar such that w bar transpose p norm is less than or equal to w bar transpose h bar e minus 1. Okay. This is a coning constraint, uh, this is a second order quadratic optimization. So, this is a second order objective this is a conic constraint. So, this is known as a second order cone problem. So, this is basically this is known as an SOCP equals second order cone program. So, this is a very interesting aspect. So, the robust beam forming problem reduces to very interesting optimization form or rather a very interesting or belongs to a very interesting class of optimization problems turned as second order cone programs where the objective function is second order all right or objective function and the constraint is a conic constraint all right. So, this is known as an SOCP problem and it is a very interesting problem. 
and uh, it can be solved and I will demonstrate it separately because it is a little involved. Uh, so, robust beam forming problem is an SOCP, let us note that. Thus, the robust beam forming problem thus the robust beam forming problem is an SOCP and the robust beam former W bar. Uh, it can be shown that robust beam former is minus of lambda. In fact, I will show this in a subsequent module plus R q inverse of h bar e. This is the robust, this is the robust beam former. this is the robust beam former and uh, lambda this is the Lagrange multiplier lambda equals Lagrange multiplier and this has to be determined suitably and the matrix Q depends on R and P basically Q equals I am sorry depends on P and H bar E. So, P P transpose minus H bar E H bar. Of course, you have seen what is P? P is the matrix corresponding to the uncertainty ellipsoid and H bar E is the uh, estimate the nominal estimate of the channel and this is the solution to the robust beam forming problem that is W bar equals you can say this is W bar star. W bar star equals minus lambda R plus lambda Q inverse into H bar E. All right. So I'll conclude this module with this. All right. So this is a very interesting problem, the robust beam forming problem, which can be shown to be an SOCP, a second order cone program, and uh, this is the solution. It's slightly involved, which I will in, uh, illustrate in a separate module. Thank you very much.